Hey guys, Kinekuchu again. First of all, I really do hope you guys enjoyed today's different type of video, since it was very fun for me to do. And second of all, I'm sure you all remember Amino by now. Well, guess what? I'll be uploading some very exclusive content and mods to my Amino profile using their brand new feature, story sharing. You all know the drill. You share a 10 second or so video, people see it, like it, share their feedback, etc. If you use social media, you know how they work. However, difference is Amino's stories never disappear. They stay there forever, and you can easily scroll between past and recent stories on one's profile. If you don't know Amino yet, then what are you waiting for? Amino powers over 1 million different social communities, including Dragon Ball. Simply click the link in the description or on my pinned comment to download Amino for free on iOS or Android. Once you're on Amino, simply search for my profile and be one of the few to get access to some very special mods. Kinekuchu out! Hey guys, Kinikuchu here, and welcome to the very first episode of The Science Behind Dragon Ball, brought to you by Dr. Kinikuchu. That's right folks, Kini has a PhD. For decades, Dragon Ball fans have enjoyed reading and watching their heroes' feats. Many have envisioned and dreamt of how it would be to be like them. Well, what if we could? Or what if Dragon Ball feats of superhuman abilities weren't so superhuman after all? On today's episode of The Science Behind Dragon Ball, Dr. Kinikuchu brings you Instant Transmission. Before we go any further, I just want to give a quick disclaimer of the contents you're about to see and hear. First and foremost, this is my own opinion, based on my own personal calculations and investigation. An investigation that of course incorporated many real-life scientific facts and articles on today's subject. Don't worry, I'll set all of my sources in the video description below so you can see I'm not d in everything I say. I will also be using some non-real-life sources, such as other science fiction works, you know, for the sake of comparison and easiness of understanding. Also, no mistranslations allowed, only works that directly follow and respect the original source material, in Dragon Ball's case, the original Japanese manga. Also, while I'm sure some science fiction works have their own interpretation of the laws of physics, as does Dragon Ball, every scenario I will plant in this video will be under the impression that every fictional universe I'm using works and functions exactly as their own laws of physics. In the end, this is all science fiction, and pure speculation, and at most this would be me trying to explain said science fiction using theoretical physics. So, all that being said, Let's get started! Instant Transmission. Don't lie, we've all tried it. This is arguably one of Goku's most famous signature techniques, probably as famous as the Kamehameha, and one that really stepped Goku up a notch in the power scale. So, let's break down how Instant Transmission actually works according to the original manga. According to Goku, this technique does not work like traditional teleportation, since it's not thinking about the place you want to go, but rather a person in a specific place. Therefore, you technically can't go somewhere you've never been, since there will be no one you've ever met before. However, later in the series, we not only see Goku bypass this flaw by simply becoming a better sensor, but he also performs it faster, easier, and with more pinpoint accuracy than ever. Also, we learned that this technique is not limited to the land of the living, as Goku can use it to go to normally inaccessible parts of the universe such as the other world or the sacred world of the Kais. In Dragon Ball's universe, he even uses it to go to a dimension located outside of the space-time continuum. Whether it's a few miles or light years away, as long as he can sense a key signature to lock onto, there is literally nothing stopping him from getting there. It is also worth noting that there is really not much else known about the Yardrasians, the race who invented and thought the technique to Goku. Only that they're a physically weak race who specialize in space-time manipulation techniques, or as Goku calls them, some very impressive tricks. In fact, the race itself never physically appears in the original manga, their only ever physical appearance was in the anime, with their design being surely handled by the animation crew. Original creator Akira Toriyama later designed a totally different appearance for the Yardrats in the RPG game Dragon Ball Online. And then Dragon Ball Super Manga illustrator and co-writer Toyotaro respected the original anime design by having the Yardrachian who appeared in the Tournament of Power look exactly like those which appeared in the Dragon Ball Z anime many years prior. Last but not least, there is a very, very important fact to mention before we go deeper into the analysis, 
In Dragon Ball, there's two different types of teleportation techniques. The instant transmission technique used by Goku and the Yard Rat Race, which will be the main basis for this video. And the instantaneous movement technique, which is used by deities such as the Supreme Kais. It is also known as the Kai Kai technique. The Kai Kai technique is far simpler and easier to use than instant transmission. Since it doesn't require you to log into any energy source in order to teleport, they simply think where they want to go, regardless of someone being there or not, and poof, they step in there out of thin air. With all intents and purposes, this is a perfect teleportation, since they do not actually need to focus on a specific energy signature to use as a target. This means that the user can transport anywhere within and even outside of their own universe, with no known limit to where the user can transport to and from, with the only confirmed exception being trapped inside the evil containment wave. It is very likely that the Yardrations invented instant transmission as a way of trying to replicate this divine technique. But this really says nothing nor gives us in-depth on how the technique really works other than just locking into someone's energy and basically popping in and out of existence at an instant. This is mostly because back in the day, violence and gore aside, Dragon Ball was mostly considered a kid's manga, with original author Akira Toriyama almost always referring to his public as kids. Therefore, he mostly tried to make things easy to understand for both him and the audience, so the explanation given to us in the, in the manga by Goku pretty much fits this mold. Luckily for us, the anime movies Dragon Ball Z The Return of Cooler and Dragon Ball Z Broly The Legendary Super Saiyan give us a bit more of depth on how the technique actually works. In these movies, we see Goku access what is known as the teleportation zone. An extra-dimensional energy field access whenever someone utilizes instant transmission. For those of you who are DC fans like me, this may sound really familiar. In these instances, it is shown that whenever Goku dematerializes himself to move into another location, he travels through this energy field and then exits it wherever he was locked onto. Very similar to how the Flash uses the speed force to time travel by focusing on where or when he wants to pop out. Ok, so we've got the basics covered. Goku standing in a neutral place, he searches for an energy signature located far away from him, say King Kai, locks onto it, then dematerializes himself, moves through the teleportation zone, then pops out, out of the zone by using King Kai's signal as a beacon to know where to pop out. Easy peasy. Nowadays, teleportation is still considered a topic of science fiction. However, there has been alleged real-life instances where people or objects have mysteriously disappeared and reappeared in other places as if it was an act of magic or some supernatural means. Most famously, the Speedster Teleporter 593 Soldier or even the Philadelphia Experiment. Many people have claimed to have had some paranormal experience that either teleported them to another place or time, and many of these events in modern era were either captured in pictures or video footage, sometimes both and from different sources. However, for those who aren't very open to the possibilities, it is easy to just dismiss these proofs as simple digital alterations. And to be honest, who wouldn't? People fear what they don't understand. And sometimes things such as time travel and teleportation are just too complex or scary to even think about. I mean, how do they work? First, it's important to establish the significant difference between time travel and teleportation. Time is nothing more than a measure of momentum. Earth rotates every 24 hours, it travels around the sun 365 days, blah 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 blah. This is nothing more than measurements of Earth's movement. So if one wanted to go back or forward in time, they would literally need to go back or forward in space, respectively to where it was or will be. Needless to say, Earth is no longer there, or it just hasn't gotten there yet. Now, teleportation. In the laws of thermodynamics, it is the first law that provides an explanation regarding real teleportation. No object can leave the universe without a huge energy source replacing it. This means that if an object is somehow removed, aka vanished, not vaporized, vanished, either a huge energy is dissipated or it is put somewhere else instantaneously, meaning one cannot simply stop existing, since that would go against the laws of nature. However, in a universe with beings capable of literally raising matter out of existence, this doesn't really apply. 
and if they do apply, it means that they must be replaced with an equal amount of energy whenever they are vanished. So, we've already mentioned the teleportation zone and its similarities with the speed force, the energy field the Flash uses for his astonishing feats of speed. So now, let's compare the actual teleportation process of the technique to one of my favorite movies of all times, 1986's The Fly, starring Jeff Goldblum. In the film, brilliant scientist and physicist Seth Brundle has created two booth-like units which he names telepods, capable of teleporting matter through space and time from one booth to another instantaneously, at a simple command. These booths are controlled by his custom-made supercomputer, which commands one pod to disintegrate an object at a molecular level, then reintegrate it atom by atom in the other pod, achieving the scientific marvel of instant teleportation. However, blood goes to hell once a common housefly goes inside a pod, the machine merges it and brundle at a molecular genetic level, and he mutates into this shit. Ugh, gross. No, but, but that's not the important thing. The interesting part here is that the computer seems to break down all the atoms in the sending booth into data, which then the receiving booth reassembles, acting as a sort of medium for both booths as it sends data from one booth to another exactly how the teleportation sun works. Goku's key acting as the sending booth, the person's energy who he's locked onto as the receiving booth, and the teleportation zone itself acting as the medium through which Goku's atoms are transferred as he teleports. Goku basically uses the energy signature as a guide to know where he's going to pop out. This is why he can choose whether to teleport in front or behind someone, because he simply uses the energy signature as a beacon to pull himself out of the zone. So technically, as long as he's in proximity of his target, he can pop nearby it. Kind of a complicated method of teleporting, am I right? And all of these processes are not really akin to simple teleportation, but are actually more similar to what is known as quantum teleportation. This particular type of teleportation is possible thanks to what we know as the quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement occurs when two or more particles are forced to hold mutually exclusive states, so determining one simultaneously determines the other. Think of it this way, Goku's key represents our first sending particle, and the other person's key represents our receiving particle. When Goku is ready to teleport himself, he entangles his energy with the other persons through the teleportation zone, therefore teleporting himself through the entanglement of both energy signatures. Theoretically, this means that Goku could actually teleport someone without him actually coming along, since he does have the ability to bring other people alongside with him, as demonstrated multiple times in the series. The only thing he would need to do is entangle them with his own energy, then send them through the teleportation zone until they get to the receiving end. It would probably require a lot of focus though. Is a single particle entangled wrong and we could end with a half a Goku, half whoever he was moving hybrid or worse? If he loses them in the zone, they could either be trapped inside it forever, or simply pop out in the middle of space or inside a wall. But this is just all stretching it too far. Besides, I don't think Goku is smart enough to figure all of this out. Maybe as Goku, at least. Anyways, moving on to our last topic. Could this be possible in real life? Man oh man, is that question difficult to answer. With all intents and purposes, with our current technological advances and probably scientific prowess, no, it is not possible. Yet. However, as I mentioned before, there has been some real-life events that purportedly made teleportation possible. One of these events was the 1593 teleported soldier legend, a legend that tells the story of a Spanish Empire soldier who was mysteriously transported from Manila in the Philippines to the Plaza Mayor in Mexico City. It is told that while the soldier was doing his job, guarding the governor's palace in Manila, Philippines, he began to feel dizzy and rested for a moment with his eyes closed. When he opened his eyes, he found himself in Mexico City, thousands of kilometers across the ocean. The guards found him in the growing universe and began questioning who he was. He was put in jail, believed to be a servant of the devil. Sometime later, someone from Manila recognized him as one of their guards, and he was released to never be heard of again. Another famous event, probably the most famous in the world, that appeals to real-life teleportation is the Philadelphia Experiment. 
The Philadelphia Experiment is an alleged military experiment supposed to have been carried out by the US Navy at the Philadelphia Navy Air Shipyard in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, sometime around October 28, 1943. It is believed that the US Navy destroyer USS Aldrich was teleported to another dimension, where it encountered aliens and teleported through time, resulting in the deaths of several sailors. Several people have claimed the experiment took place and the extraordinary phenomenon did occur. However, military officials have denied the experiment ever happened and have classified the story against physical laws. Have these events been just a hoax? Nothing more than science fiction to trigger our imagination, or perhaps there's something more than simply isn't on our grasp. Just yet. Who knows? Nonetheless, we still can't entirely rule out teleportation as a real thing. That being said, quantum entanglement is a thing, a very, very real thing, which made teleportation, or at least a way of it, real as well. And as we mentioned before, the way instant transmission works follows very closely the concept of quantum teleportation, teleporting something from one object to another by converting said object or property into data or information, while traditional instant teleportation that requires no beacon or anything, aka Kai Kai, is, well, still a total mystery for science. Don't get me wrong though, ever since 2004, transporting atoms is a thing, a thing that may as well make actual teleportation a real thing one day. So if you like science, do not be afraid of learning or researching, because who knows, maybe, just maybe, you're the one who will discover teleportation someday. And maybe, people like me, of my generation, maybe, just maybe, we will live to see Nah, who am I kidding? It's almost 2020 or there's still no flying cars. Doc Brown would be so disappointed in y'all, humanity. Shame on you. But well, that is it for today, guys. Just remember, this is my own opinion. So feel free to share yours on the comments and feel free to share any and all articles you find interesting that relate to today's topic. If you liked this video and you'd like for me to make more of these, please let me know. It was a very fun and learning experience for me to try and understand the science and complexity behind Dragon Ball, and I would really love to do it again. Despite it, you know, being mostly about flying dudes who shoot lasers and punch each other, Dragon Ball does raise some very interesting questions about science. So please let me know which topic or technique you would like me to cover in the next video, if I do one. Oh, and don't forget to follow me on Amino. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I really, really hope to see you all next time. Dr. Kinikuchu out.